Hello friends, today I wanted to show you a paint with me. Um, sorry for the noises in the background. I opened the window for one of my cats because it's like the per first um, warm days and I have no heart to close the window because he's sitting there and listening to the whole world. So excuse me if you hear random noises. I am prepping my space because I am going to spend a lot of hours on painting this piece. It is a special one actually. It is very close to my heart because this is Lila and uh, she's a dog that has passed away already and she is a very she's very much a spirit guide i want to say because the email that i got from my client was so very moving and talking about lila was such an inspirational puppy and so deep in the world and actually guiding them through emotions so yeah we are first making the painting and then we are customizing it to make it into a tattoo so i can't wait to see that i am prepping my watercolor paper i chose a square format this time i kind of like it because it's not like forcing you to make a um long vertical composition it just lets you work in an oval shape or a round shape and as always, I am making the um, first layers of like the overall color palette that is going to be there. Uh, keeping in mind that um, it has to be light and with watercolors you go like pretty much from the lightest to the darkest. Uh, you can't like paint over the darkest things unless you have, I don't know, a gel pen or acrylic paints. I was supposed to make Lila sitting in a forest, which was like one of her favorite spaces in the whole world. And uh, that's what I did. And I wanted to add the moon. Uh, so I made it into like more of a night composition. So the uh, main palette is blues and greens. <laughs> surprise, surprise with me, right? Um, you can see that I'm sometimes hesitating with how I want to do things. Um, it's very tricky starting a composition actually, so don't be too hard on yourself if you actually do have any doubts. Um, because, yeah, they come, they come along. And, you know, watercolors are pretty cool in the way that you can reactivate the layer of paint that you made so you can make like easier transitions. Um, and that kind of helps me with the quote-unquote mistakes that I do um, because yes I do them it's not like that I know everything it's like you start with a blank page and you really don't know what's going to happen uh, it's stepping into the unknown so it kind of takes bravery and courage I want to say uh, if it doesn't sound too cheesy mm. so yes what I mean is don't be too hard on yourself if you're afraid like to touch a coloring page or to start a painting because you're afraid that you'll spend hours and hours and suddenly it will turn out that oh my goodness you don't like it. I sometimes do that. I pretty often do that actually. Uh, so it happens to a lot of us and, and it's just a matter of not giving up and you know keep on trying. I like to sit on the floor <laughs> when I paint, it makes me feel more grounded. I don't know, Maybe, yeah, I think it's just a matter of grounding myself. Sitting in this chair in an office-like position is completely not for me. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you can see in the meantime, I added the yellow flowers just to have a splash of color. I used the... Uh, Pastel Dreams Prima Marketing Watercolor Palette 
It's actually a little bit more chalky than the uh, trusty ones or Newton that I have on the left next to it, but it gives that more thick color if you want to do that. So I find it really helpful in these situations. Actually, sometimes it can allow you also to put the color over the dark things, which contradicts what I said before. Um, but yeah, it's thick enough. Uh, so you can get yeah that splash of color on the dark spots of your painting. I decided to put the dark um, on the fur of the dog right now because um, with the dark background and the black fur on the dog, I was starting to be afraid that it would all like kind of blend together too much. So I wanted to see how much darkness I have to have um, in the front, in the dog. Uh, so I would be able to adjust the background and not lose any details from the front. But yeah, it looks like a quick job, but it actually takes hours and hours. Oh my gosh. It actually took more than one day for me to paint because I had to go to the studio. <laughs> and yeah, now it's time for a break. Watering plants was one of my tasks for the day and I decided to kind of um, stand up from the ground, stretch my back and get it done. I have a lot of, a lot of plants that require watering like from the top like those ferny ones, uh, my pelargonia, so yes, it was a water break. <laughs> well, my plant and I needed a break for a coffee <laughs> and since we've done that, I have taken a moment off to read some emails and now we are back. All right, guys, with the page completely dry, I was starting to play around with the greens in the front because I made a lot of ferns, a lot of grasses, a lot of flowers so you can see like the outline of them on the bottom and when i had that i was feeling more confident with the trees in the back because i had like the tone of the green you can see like the front is a lot warmer and if you look at um like the forest in the evening or any photo of, of forests uh, like at sundown the background is always in a cooler tone than the than what's in the front of the photo so keep that in mind maybe if you want to make the piece a little bit more realistic so to speak i'm leaving the blind spots actually for like white shiny moths which i will outline only only in the so charlotte <laughs> Sorry, my kitty came for cuddles. Um, you, what was I saying? Oh yes, I will outline the moths in the end only uh, because I will do that in with my um, black point pen, and I am usually doing that like near to the end. You can see that right now. I actually stopped filming for a while, so sorry about that. And I didn't realize. But yeah, I have a lot more detail going on. And actually, I made that with a pen. But I decided to go back to paint for a little bit because I knew that I have some details that I wasn't quite satisfied with yet. Like the dog was definitely too bright so i had the reference photo and i wanted to make her look as much as i could as lila the puppy that she was representing and yeah you can see that right now i am i have my laptop next to me and i am looking at the reference photo 
Don't be afraid or ashamed of doing that. It's normal that we want to check on how things look. We don't always do everything from our memory. It's not required. You can help yourself with art like that. Of course, you don't have to. If you want to make a composition purely from your imagination, that's just as well in art what I, I think said before in one of my Patreon videos. In art there are no mistakes. But okay, I think we are getting closer to the end. So thank you so so much for watching. I cherish you all so much. If you want to see more of my step-by-step -step videos, uh, feel free to check out my Patreon and I will be posting more videos here as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you. And yeah, see you very soon, dears. Bye.